All right, guys, with the trailer premiering today and all that other good stuff, here is the review of Transformers The Last Night. Premiere edition Voyager Optimus Prime, and that is a lot of words. Voyager Optimus Prime, a Voyager version of this particular model of Optimus. Now, he did get an uh, Age of Extinction Voyager Optimus, which was his evasion mode, which we've got right here, just to give you an idea of the size of them together. I mean, evasion mode was his, you know, his G1 cab look. We did get, like, two leader class figures of the, 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 the premier first edition one, which was gross. And, um, and then the official leader version, that was also, eh, you know, like, nah, you know, it was bad. Um, so here's the Voyager version, which one, I like just, you can see a sword stored under there. I like the Voyager version already just right off the bat. Just to the size of it. It's a good size of Transformer figure. And uh, and this one actually solves a lot of the problems. You know, like, like every movie robot, they've had the time to uh, refine the mold. Like the, the Revenge of the Fallen Optimus was way better than the movie one leader Optimus. Uh, I think we can all agree on that. A little bit more frustrating, but overall a better representation of the on-screen model. And I think they've done the same thing here with this. He doesn't have any painted rims, which is a shame. Um, and he does roll. But you can see the shield stores right back here. The sword stores in the slot underneath. And uh, you'll notice this. We'll show this off in robot mode, but he actually has a little sheath for the sword in robot mode, so you can store that on his back, because this is the back of the robot here. So to go ahead to turn him into a robot, um, we'll go ahead and pop the shield off right back here. And the sword, you don't want to just pull it out uh, because it, because of the taper. You kind of want to slide it in, and it helps if you slide it in from this side. It'll fit this way, but the uh, the pommel butts right up against this, and it fits a lot easier, uh, a lot more smoothly. It has a little bit of clearance if you fold if you push it in from the back. We'll slide the sword out, and we'll set those off to the side. Yeah, just a quick little turnaround. So we pop this whole canopy up off of here. These side panels open up like this and you can see the torso and the arms of the, the head hiding up in there and the general leg structure here so we pop it's actually it's actually a pretty ingenious transformation and, and, and i dig it i wasn't planning on buying a lot of toys from uh the last night um and i i, I will do megatron like that will probably get both versions of megatron they look cool um i don't know how many i'll probably get the wave three bumblebee with a swappable arm cannon but uh, I, don't, I don't know how many toys from last night I'm, I'm really going to review. Maybe it'll be more than I expect. But um, like I said, Voyager Prime I wanted because it looked portable. It looked like they had improved the transformation. And I do tend to dig this physical design for Optimus. Um, and I, like I said, I'll get the Voyager Megatron to face off with him because I like to have Optimus and Megatron in the same scale. And uh, I'll probably get the leader Megatron just because he looks cool. Anyway, so we split this up. We'll pull the arms out to the sides here. These panels right here, you flip them forward. They, they can go all the way around, but like if you start to flip them this way, they, they see this tab bumps into that. Uh, so it's easier to just flip them all the way around this like this. And then these come and rotate back. You can see here's his feet. We split these panels right here. They untab from right here on the sides. Or the hips, actually. And you fold those down like this, split these apart, rotate the shins, actually, yeah, the shins, uh, the shins are forward this way, because here's the little waist plate, and then these panels rotate around to the inside of the leg, kind of cover the wheels, you can see how this panel also covers the wheels here, and then you bring the foot down, you untab that the foot tabs in right there, bring the foot down, and rotate this whole piece, and then the foot will then again tab up into here, this right up into this little slot right here. And then this piece folds up and there's a little, there's a tab right here and a slot right here and just kind of wraps around the leg like that. So he does have a thicker leg, but it's uh, a lot more elegant of a transformation than, than the previous versions. So you flip that up and there is the waist all done. And you rotate it around to the front like this. These panels come around and fold back onto the back like this. And there's a couple tabs here that this is going to tab onto in a minute. You want to leave these open a little bit because this needs to fit in there. But fold those down around to the back. The arms come down. These fold around and tab in here. 
like that. The shoulder guards untab and rotate out to the sides. Uh, there's a little tab up here that tabs into the slot back here. You lift that up and rotate those out to the side. Bring the arms forward. These panels lift up and tab on to the back of the forearm. This piece rotates down. The head rotates up. And get my finger onto it. There we go. Flip his head up. The chest pin. Let me, let me stand him here and raise the camera just a smidge. There we go. Head rotates up. The chest plate, like I said, flips forward and pegs up into place. The little peck armor rotates up to the side. Like I said, this, this you want to leave just a little bit of a gap so this center piece can come down. And these two tabs right here on the uh, on this piece tab into these two slots on the back of the gray piece. So like I said, you want to have room for that middle piece to sit down and then tab it all together like that. And the backpack sits here on his back. It does wobble a little bit. And you can hold, have him hold his sword. And you can peg the shield onto either forearm. You can, you can be ambidextrous, it doesn't matter which side you, you use. He's got a peg hole over here as well. And like I said, the sword can also... The, the little sheath bit is right there in between this hood piece and his back. You can kind of see the slot there. And if you want, you can slide the sword into there and you can store it on his back. It's kind of cool. He has no wrist articulation. A little bit of a shame because it looks like they probably could have easily put a little swivel there, but they didn't. Um, but he's got a little ball jointed neck. Uh, he can look side to side, down a little bit, up a little bit, but not a lot just due to the sculpt and where everything hits. Uh, swivel shoulders, both front to back and up and down. These, of course, rotate and can lift up if you need that. The pectoral muscles, if you really want to count those as a point of articulation, they're supposed to just sit there. Bicep swivel, uh, single hinge elbow there about that much room no wrist swivel he does have waist swivel um, and again side to side front to back hips no ratchets uh, they seem semi-tight they're not like super tight but they're also not he's gonna fall over loose uh, but no ratchets there this piece flips up uh, thigh swivel on each side he does have hinges in the knees but due to like you don't get a whole lot of motion out of them unfortunately and again because of the way the feet transform there's no ankle tilt but all in all, um, for a Voyager class figure, I think it's a much more streamlined transformation. He does still have the backpack, but it's not nearly as egregious as either of the previous leaders. Kind of big boots. Maybe that's where he hid those jets the whole time in Age of Extinction that he suddenly had at the very, very end. Spoiler alert. But yeah, all in all, like I said, I think this is a nice little representation of the Age of Extinction slash last night Optimus design. And it's pretty cool. I dig it. Um, here he is next to... I'm using this Voyager Grimlock because I don't think I'm going to open the other one if you saw my quick last night Grimlock video review. But just to give you an idea of the height of him. And here he is with his previous... He's got the DX9... I think it's the DX9 kit rifle. But here he is with his previous Voyager incarnation. I think they look good together too from his evasion. That, that, that's pretty much his evolution in the last movie. He went from his rusty old... Evasion mode square cab Optimus into his uh, Age of Extinction form there. So yeah. Um, like I said, don't know how many last night figures I'm going to review, but this Optimus I did want. I got the Grimlock with it because it was a package deal of... You can buy both of them, but not either one singly. So I bought both of them. I will probably watch my Twitter feed. Probably going to put that Grimlock up for sale if anybody wants it. But Optimus is, like I said, he's quite cool. He he is, I don't want to say a shining beacon of hope, but he's encouraging. Like some of the, the 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 Megatron designs that I felt were really neat looking from Toy Fair, this gives me heart that they will probably be executed fairly decently as well because um, that's a, like I said, it's not 100% perfect. Maybe in a leader class, if they took another swipe at a leader class Optimus, we would see even more refinements like we did with the uh, the Revenge of the Fallen Optimus. But for a Voyager class figure, that's a pretty uh that's a pretty decent take on on this current movie design. So yeah, there it is. The last night premiere edition Voyager Optimus Prime.